Tapi. Now, from Anambra, let's take a look at the security situation in Imo State as it is not spared in the crisis plaguing the region. From the sit at home orders to kidnapping and even the violence in general, it has left a bitter taste in the mouth of citizens. The question is what steps are being taken and what should the government do as the elections, yes, there is an election in Anambra State, are fast approaching. What are the key things to put in place to even ensure a hitch free election? Well, for more on this, I have Gozie Wanchuku, who is a chieftain of the People's Democratic Party in Imo State. Good to see you and thanks for your time. Thank you, Slima. Sit at home order. That's uh, a, a, a lifestyle that many Nigerians, especially those outside the Southeast, uh, still cannot fathom how uh, that came to be. Uh, what's the situation at the moment in Imo State? And uh, because Adam Brass seemed to be cooling off, but uh, there was a viral video that was believed to have been from Imo State. I'm quite sure you saw the video. Yes, I did. Suleiman, the issue here is that the insecurity situation plaguing the Southeast appears to manifest in different shades in the, fi in the five southeastern states. The one in Imo state is peculiar. Peculiar? Be very peculiar, because of certain reasons. One is the fact that there are non armed non-state actors. Known? Armed non-state actors, known, that were brought in by the government of the state in the guise of or in the name of trying to stem the security challenges in the state. You could attest to the fact that recently the former Niger Delta warlord attested to the fact that his boys were helping to keep security in some places and Imo was one of them. I can tell you that if you go to places like Osu local government, most three quarters of that local government, if you go to Ejemepuru, if you go to Zombe, you go to Agwa, these are all in the oil producing Uguta local government. Over 300 houses have been raised by persons in a manner that you wouldn't relate to the conventional style or methods of stepping security challenges. Because human houses, structures don't commit crime. What actually commits crime are human beings. So the innocent persons, villagers and communities that are being born, what have they done? So there's a problem in Imo State. Uh, you, you, sorry I'm cutting you here. You just established that there's a problem. And for the first time, I'm getting to hear that what is known as unknown gone men is actually known gunmen. And you said these people are known. Known to who or in this case? Suleiman, in Imo State, there is no hiding from the fact that there are criminal elements who are also involved in these problems. But the issue is that the conventional constitutional security agents and agencies in Imo State seem to have taken a to seem to have taken a back seat and allowed these armed non-state actors who are now agents of the state government to take the lead in fighting of security in Imo State. One of the issues at stake in Imo that has been very, very depressing is the fact that you could see the man from Anambra you just had. You could also see the governor of Enugu State, Mbanao. On Monday, you could see in, in the marketplaces, in the public places, trying to restore confidence in the masses. But what has happened in Imo is that Imo has been abandoned by the governor. The governor is no longer resident in the state. The man is in Abuja. So what happens is that once there's a security challenge, there's nobody to come out to restore confidence to speak to the people. You are a member of the PDP, and perhaps that's why you're saying this. How do you know for a fact okay. that your governor 
doesn't reside in Imo State. Suleiman, during the seven days that there was a sit at home in the Southeast, there was a meeting held by Southeast leaders. What did that meeting hold? It held there in Abuja, at the instance of an in Dibo. What does that, and that meeting was chaired by our own governor in Abuja here. <laughs> Should that meeting be holding in Abuja? That's a Southeast meeting. The governor of Enugu State is in Enugu. Is there restoring confidence in the people? Suleiman, the challenge is that in Imo today, there is a collapse of the face of governance in terms of security. Okay, let me give you an example. Look at what is happening in Ukraine today. You can see the hands on approach of Zelensky. Even his presence restores some measure of confidence in the masses. In the troops. But when the people feel like, oh, they'll be left to their fate, even the man constitutionally given the responsibility to as ensure that the security of lives and property is assured in that state, the man is not there. So, man, I'm telling you, and I want to be challenged. Bola Tinibu was sworn in May 29th. Between May 29th and today, the governor has spent only five days in Imo State. Five days. He came back. How do you know this for sure? The governor came back. He left the state. Went for the swearing of the president. Who only reappeared on the day the state assembly was being inaugurated. By Monday, he was off again. He came back on. He came back on Saturday, when he was doing. When he was presenting something, he called the Imo uh, law report. By Sunday. When this APC national chairman was being removed, the man he appeared in Abuja. How do I know this again? The statement he issued, go and check all the statements he has issued in the last one month. They have all been from Abuja here. The latest is the one he issued yesterday, where he said that the APC governors and the federal government are working out palliatives and measures to try to... That, that statement, is it the Minister of Finance? Is it the Minister of Economic Planning? What is he doing here? Other governors here, the other ones are in their states taking care of business. Well, anyway, you know, there are a lot of things. This looks uh, very political, uh, especially in an election year. Many Nigerians watch it will say this is because an election is coming in Imo State. Because the same man you have said uh, absconded, uh, has absconded responsibilities, abdicated responsibility, just increased the minimum wage of workers in the Imo state. Now, uh, quickly here, for as opposition PDP, are, are there measures your party is uh, suggesting or bringing forward to arrest the insecurity situation, if we can do this quickly? Yes, quickly. First of all, I want to let you know that there are some workers in Imo state that have not been paid for two years. And that uh, before you do an increment, you should first of all pay the one that has already been agreed. That thing is a farce. But that will be a story for another day. Now, look at some of the measures we are proposing. First and foremost, the security top brass in Imo State seem to be overwhelmed by the situation. They've tried. We would we are advocating that the federal government should immediately, immediately look for security operatives and agents who have excelled in places of conflict around the country or outside the country who have excelled and bring them into Imo State right now to take over security in that state. The guys running the show there now are totally overwhelmed. Two, the federal government should also order the demobilization of these armed non-state actors with immediate effect and also set up a high-powered panel to investigate and to unravel their role in the security challenges in Imo State. And please, the government of Imo State should not have a hand in that particular thing. Then three, if you want security in Imo State, the governor of Imo has to go. Well, I think finally it looks like uh, that's where you headed. Uh, I'd like to thank you for your time, uh, Christian, um, uh, I beg your pardon, Gozier. Uh, thank you, Dechuku. Thank you for your time. Um, Gozier Wanchuku, PDP yes. chieftain. Uh, many thanks for speaking with us. Well, at this point in time, I'd like to uh, say we have offered a right of reply to the APC and the government of Imo State to speak on some of the allegations uh, that the PDP chieftain, Gozier uh, Wanchuku, has uh, levied against the state. Well, that's it on 
uh, tonight's edition of Arise Prime Time. Do join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. It's goodbye and thanks for watching.